He's right there. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and give him praise and thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor and praise you, O oh God. We honor and praise you, Almighty God. For Lord, you are faithful, O oh God. You are holy. You are righteous. You are mighty. You are pure, O oh God. You are my God, my Lord, and my Savior. Lord, I just honor you, O oh God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that... Lord, my time, and oh Lord, is not always your time, and Lord, but you know the exact time. You know the right time. Lord, you know what's good for, Lord, me, oh God, and for what's good for my brothers and sisters. And Lord, you, oh God, work all things out, oh Lord, to bring glory to your precious name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Would you just give him a hand clap of praise this morning? Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many would say this morning that, amen, I just got some stuff to be thankful for. I just got some stuff to be thankful for. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's kind of like the little lady said one time, he's brought me a mighty long ways. He's brought me a mighty, mighty long ways. Glory to God. When you can put your trust in him, you put your weight all you wait down upon his precious promises and his word, amen, then you, amen, can just rest in God, rest in the Lord. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. Would you stand for the reading of God's word, amen, this morning. like to remind you that we are so thankful for each and every one of you who are faithful to God's house. Did you know that when, you're, when you come to, to church that you are exhibiting faith? Yes. You're exhibiting faith. It's an operation of faith. When you read your Bible, it's an operation of faith. When you pray, it's an operation of faith. Amen. It's an operation of faith. Hallelujah. A lot of people have said, Pastor, I just don't have faith. You've got faith. Amen. The Bible says the Lord has given each and every one of us the measure of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith pleases God. And when God is pleased, it excites me. Amen. It excites me. Praise the Lord. Colossians 3 and 23. It says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Amen. Whatever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. When you pick up trash on the church parking lot, do it heartily. Do it heartily as unto God, not unto man. When you sing in the choir, amen, do it heartily. Do it as unto God, not unto man. When you are worshiping, when you are praising, when you are glorifying God, when you get up in the morning and you're getting ready to come to church, when you pick up your word, do it heartily as unto God. Not unto man. See, you will never please man. You will never please man. Man will always find something to complain about. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not being mean here. I'm just stating, amen, I, I seen the other day this, uh, this minister, he done an example, and ultimately what it was all about was he put up there on the on the overhead, 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 4 plus 4 is 8. And 5 plus 5 is 8, 9. 
And everybody saw the last one and said, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. But they didn't make a comment on all the ones that got right. They pointed out the wrong one. And so, see, we'll never please man. I mean, that's just flesh. And so we do things, amen, in church. We do things in our Christian life, and our Christian walk. We do them heartily as unto God because we're doing them for God. We're doing them for God. Sometimes we forget about that. And sometimes we forget about it and we want to sing, amen, Sister So-and-So song because every time I sing that song, she gets up and shouts. Yeah, that's good. Or I want to do this because, amen, every time I do this, amen, Brother Lollipop looks at me and says, smiles and yeah, yeah, preach on, brother. <laughs> amen. Yeah. But we are to do all things heartily yeah. as unto God, amen. not unto man. Not unto man. Amen. So I want to speak this morning on the subject, zeal for the Lord. Zeal for the Lord. How many knows we need to have zeal? Amen. We need to have zeal. Amen. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in your house. Lord, I take authority over every hindrance and distraction right now in the name of Jesus and Lord, I pray, God, that you, O oh God, would anoint this messenger. Lord, your word is anointed. Your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. And Lord, we just give honor to your word. But Lord, your messenger needs the anointing. And I pray that you'd help me, Lord, to minister your word. Lord, that I might speak with boldness, O oh God. Let your word find resting place to touch somebody's heart. And Lord, we give you all the praise in Jesus precious name and everybody said amen. amen amen praise the Lord look at your name and say you look especially wonderful today you look especially wonderful today I'm telling you you're looking awesome brother hey, thank you, I mean you glory to God awesome look a lot better than you did the other day when I saw you <laughs> amen praise the Lord glory to God Amen. Now see, you should have done that with zeal. You should have done that wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Webster defines the word zeal as eagerness and ardent interest in pursuit of something. Two synonyms, that word always messes me up. Must be of the devil. Synonyms are fervor or passion. Fervor or passion. In our text today, it said, uh, don't use the word heartily. And the word heartily means from the soul. From the soul. With all your heart and with all your might. How many knows that we can only acquire victory from 100% effort? We can only require, uh, acquire victory from 100% effort. And it's, and it's so awesome when we fight battles or when we, amen, have done something and, and we know that we have given it our all. We didn't hold anything back, but we eagerly gave everything we had in us and put it forth and we can stand back and say, wow, it's awesome. It's awesome. Amen. But then when it don't turn out right, and you haven't given it your all, you stand back and you say, man, what if I'd have, what if I'd have, what if I? You know, and a lot of times I think about that, Brother Mel, amen, what will we feel like, amen, on our deathbed when we're fixing to depart this world, and all of a sudden we look back on our lives, and this word comes in and says, what if I, what if I had to put my all into that? What if I had been zealous, more passionate? Amen. What if I had to give, I mean, everything from my heart, amen, into and into that? Amen. What would have happened? Who would have got saved? Whose life would have changed? What would have took place? Amen. 
See, people are passionate and zealous for a lot of things in life. They're, they're passionate and zealous for a whole lot of things in this life. We're passionate about work trying to succeed. We're passionate about possessions, trying to get more. We're passionate about hobbies and interests. We're passionate about our sports and our time. And we'll put energy, money, and time into the things we are passionate about. The real question is, are we passionate about the things that are most important? Are we passionate about things that will last for eternity? You see, the things that a lot of us, and I'm going to include me because I put my passion in things that I, that I do, amen, and when, a lot of times we put our passion in things that are temporal, that one day will be gone. You know, it's been a lot of times that I've, I've had something and I really worked on and really put a lot of time in it, a lot of passion in it, and a lot of zeal in it. I'm telling you, I was excited and I worked and worked and, and, and done everything I could to accomplish it and get it just right. And then after I got it just right, Shane, all the hoopla was over. Well, it's pretty, it's nice, you know, but what now? But see, when we put all of our passion, all our might, and our, be zealous about the things of God, it will last for eternity. See, we got to lay aside our wants, our desires. we got to lay aside our feelings and our emotions. Amen. And be like Paul, set our face like a flint toward the prize of the high calling of God. Amen. And seek God with all your might, with all your strength, and be zealous for the kingdom of God. Do what you do unto the Lord heartily. Do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Not to man, glory to God. And then one of these days, hallelujah, we when you walk on the streets of gold and through the gates of pearl, amen, the King of kings and the Lord of lords and say, welcome, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you a ruler over a few. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be zealous about that. Amen. We must be passionate about God. Passionate about God. Amen. So the first question, our first First point is, where does zeal come from? Zeal comes from knowing God. Zeal comes from knowing God. You see, we got saved. The Spirit of God came into our hearts and our lives. All of the sin and the shame was washed away. All things were made brand new. And we read the Word of God. We learned how to pray. Amen. We came to church and worshiped the Lord and witnessed His Word to the lost. And the zeal of the Lord was evident. It was oozing out of us. We were so excited. We were so eager. Amen. We anticipated the moment that we got to come be in the house of God oh we looked forward to amen the piano player striking G chord glory amen we looked forward to amen the moment we had the opportunity to lift our hands and, and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth glory to God amen we amen had zeal oh you couldn't wait to get to church or to read the word of God and to pray and talk about the Lord and then you got filled with a Holy Holy Ghost and the fire and you couldn't shut up amen you could not shut up you wanted everybody to be filled with the Holy Ghost yeah. hallelujah yeah. hallelujah glory to God zealous and that's what happened on the day of Pentecost that's what happened. Amen. That 120 got filled with the Holy Ghost and they became, became eager and ardent and, and enthusiastic and zealous and wholehearted, vehement, intense and fierce and fiery. Glory to God. It was evident and the multitude of 3,000 were saved and filled with the Holy Ghost that day because the 120 was passionate and was wholeheartedly worshiping God and had received from the Lord and they were zealous glory. That 120 was full of God and wanted everyone to know it. Wanted everyone to know it. They were zealous. They were excited. You see, number two, the zeal of the Lord should be a priority in our lives. It should be a priority in our lives. Get excited, church. 
You need to work on that. I need to work on that. We all need to work on that. We need to work on being excited once again. Excited. You see, everybody, amen, their attention is drawn to someone that's excited. Someone, amen, that's excited. Someone that's eager. Somebody that's, whoa, man, let me tell you what happened yesterday. And all ears all of a sudden just opens right up. Oh, sister so-and-so, my, she got filled with the Holy Ghost. And, man, she danced all over that church. She spoke in tongues. She couldn't say one word of English, amen. When she went home, she was still in the Spirit. Glory to God. Oh, last night at that little church, amen, on on. on Burger and, and Fairview, I'm telling you, the people, we had to get people to drive them home. They were so drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Excited. Amen. And people, all of a sudden, they may not act like they want to hear that. But they, amen, deep down on the inside, that's what draws people, amen, to the Lord. That's what draw them, amen, because they see, amen, the glory. They see the presence of God. They see the anointing. They see the power of the Spirit that's evident in your life. And it draws them, amen, to their hearts. And it convicts them of their sin. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. So, God has got to be a priority in our lives. Because God desires us to be zealous. Amen. Listen, if me and my wife, when we got married, if I wasn't zealous towards her, I got not on the log. Boy, what's wrong with you? No, I was zealous. I couldn't wait to get home from work. I couldn't wait to get one of those tuna fish sandwiches. <laughs> Okay, it took her a little while to learn how to cook, but she can cook. I couldn't wait. I, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to go ahead and be a little glass house in front of you. About the first week we got married, I had to go to Little Rock on a sales trip. I was working in a parts store, and we had a, a, a meeting. Well, I went to the warehouse there in Little Rock, and and we met, well, I remember when we got, I was riding with somebody else, but when I got back to Dumas, we were 12 miles from my house. And I had me a Pontiac Grand Prix with a 455 in that baby. I'm telling you, that was a suave little car. I had that before we got married. I had to get rid of it afterwards. I got in that car because my sugar booger was at home, I'm telling you. And she had a tuna fish sandwich waiting on me. I jumped in that Pontiac and I left out. And buddy, they was fire breathing out the back of that thing. And I had a friend that was a state trooper, Jerry Green. Jerry, how you doing? How you doing, buddy? Jerry Green. And I hit him straight away and here I was going. Boy, I was laid back. And uh, all of a sudden, blue lights, here they come. Pulled me over, and he walked up to the car, and he said, Keith, where are you going? I said, buddy, I'm going home. <laughs> going home. And he clocked you at a, he said, I clocked you at a hundred and five miles an hour. <laughs> and he said, man, my supervisor's in the car. i got to give you a ticket. He said, but I'm going to give you a ticket for 65 and a 55. He dropped her way on back there. But I was going home. I was eager. I was zealous. Amen. And that's the way we should be on the Lord. Now, I'm not saying drive 105 miles an hour to church. I mean, uh, whatever. Be zealous about what God has done in your life. Amen. Be excited. Hallelujah. Amen. Titus 2 and 14 says, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Yeah. Zealous of good works. 
Romans 12 and 11, amen, says, Not slothful in business, fervent in power, serving the Lord. Well, I know some churches think Christians should be seen and not heard, but not in this church. Not this pastor. Amen? Our faith should be fervent or boiling over for God. Like the song says, you don't know what I know, what the Lord has done. Amen. Get all excited. Going to tell everybody what Jesus Christ has done. Amen. Get all excited. Going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We need zealous preaching. We need zealous singing. We need zealous worship. We need zealous prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The zeal of God has consumed me. This is what one person said. The zeal of God has consumed me and it burns in my soul. Oh, Jeremiah, amen, he thought about the word of God. And amen, he said, I'm not going to speak the word of God anymore. I'm discouraged. I'm distraught. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm not going to say anything else about the Lord. I'm not going to say anything about, amen, all the goodness of God. No more. But then he said, all of a sudden, there was something happened on the inside of me. And there was something began to burn. There was something began to stir. Amen. And he said, it was like fire shut up in my bones, glory to God. And he had to let it go, hallelujah. That's the zeal that we need. Listen, God has put his very best in you. He's given you his precious word. And that word died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood and rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He's given his all and he's put it inside of you. Amen. We cannot afford to clam up. We can't afford to back down. We can't afford forward to tone it down. Amen. But today is the day that we need to loosen and let it go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like fire. David said, amen, in his word, he was a little distraught. He was a little discouraged. Amen. And he went in and began to encourage himself. And he said, when I, all I'm, while I mused upon the Lord, a fire began to burn. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Zeal. I mean, fire, I mean, begin to stir in the hearts and the lives. Hallelujah. Glory. Number three, zeal changes people. Zeal changes people. Zeal is contagious. It's contagious. It's like fire. I think about Samson. I love the story. He has some good fox dogs. Amen. It called 300 fox. He tied their tails together and set them on fire and turned them loose in the enemies weave in fields. Listen, that fire changed the attitude of those fox. That fire changed the character of those fox. Those fox, amen, went forth and done exactly, amen, what they were set forth to do. Amen. And everything they touched was changed. Everything they touched. People can see the difference in you. The family, your co-workers, your neighbors, your dog. Amen. They can see and know something exciting is going on in your life. When you, amen, are zealous and when you wholeheartedly, amen, are worshiping and giving and doing unto the Lord. See, a congregation with zeal will make a preacher preach better and a choir sing better. A congregation with zeal will convict sinners and cause others to seek the Holy Ghost. A congregation with zeal will see, uh, see the sick healed and delivered. We need to return to our first love and regain our zeal for the Lord. Amen. Once again. Hallelujah. Listen, it don't matter what you sing, it don't matter the style, it don't matter the words, it don't matter. Amen. If you're full of zeal, glory to God, you'll be just like Haskell Grant. You'll be up there hopping and jumping and worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Zealous for the things of God. Number four, the zeal of the Lord will keep you from sin. 
It'll keep you from sin. King David got into trouble and sinned with Bathsheba when he decided to stay home while everyone else went to fight. See, he began to lose his zeal. He began to lose his eagerness and his excitement to fight the battles of the Lord. He decided, I really don't have to go to church every time the doors are open. It's Sunday night. The ball game is, is on tonight. It's Wednesday night. The Razorbacks are playing. Prayer meeting. They have it Tuesday morning and Saturday morning. No one needs to pray that much. You're losing your zeal. Amen. Losing it. Amen. That's how people begin to lose their zeal for the Lord. And things become routine. And they begin to dread. dread. And then they begin to operate out of routine and out of, out of just habit. And it becomes a tradition. It becomes, amen, something that's dormant in their lives. But God wants us to wake up. Wake up. We are serving an eternal God. Amen. We are praying eternal prayers. We are worshiping an eternal God. Hallelujah. Giving glory and honor through eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to regain our, amen, zeal for God. Amen. And then, after they back off, they say, well, we're just going to back off for a little while. We'll be back in a month or so. We'll be back in a week or, or a year. Or we'll be back. They've grown cold in the hearts. And then, pastor's phone rings and says pastor my life's a mess my life's a mess listen I can, I can detour you from that stay faithful to God I mean, do everything you can to maintain your zeal for God number five how do we get our zeal back how do we get it back first of all be filled with the Holy Ghost be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5 and 18, it says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory, don't be filled with the things of this world. Don't be filled with all of the, of the intoxicating things of, of the temporal. But be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Lord. And begin to worship God. Amen. And begin to quote His Word. And just, amen, worship Him and glorify Him. And sing the songs of Zion. Oh, listen, I want you to know, amen, as you begin to read the Word of God and speak that Word, as you begin to sing and worship, as you begin begin to glorify the Lord as you find your quiet place and pray amen and remind God of the promises amen and read and speak the word of God unto the Lord it's not long glory to God your feet begins to get light amen and you begin to amen feel the presence and the glory of the Lord we got to amen go and receive our zeal once again we need the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives every day every day Pray for passion. Colossians 4 and 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. James 5 and 16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16, it says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to pray. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. In Revelations, Jesus told the church of Ephesus to return to their first love. He said, remember therefore from which thou art fallen and repent and do your first works over. Amen. All we have to do is come boldly before the throne of grace, obtain mercy for our failures and grace for a time of need and spend a little time with Him. It won't be long, amen, that that little coal that's been separated from the fire, amen, that little coal that's just placed back, amen, in the middle of the heat glory, amen, will begin to burn once again. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Now, let me just tell you, your pastor every now and then has to remind himself. Has to remind himself. I'm like, you know, I've been like David. I've had to muse upon the things of the Lord and encourage myself. Because sometimes I didn't have uh, somebody to encourage me. So I had to encourage myself. You know, David, at that moment, that's where he was at Ziklag. I mean, his followers, they wanted to stone him. I probably got some church members that wanted to stone me. But I had to encourage myself. I had to pray. I had to read the Word. I had to remind myself. Oh, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and never beneath. You're the right. I had to talk to myself, remind myself. Amen. I had to pray and seek God, read His Word. But then, amen, as I was reading, glory to God, the Lord began to speak to me through the Word of God. Well, I'm telling you, I, if y'all not come to a uh, prayer meeting on Saturday morning, y'all missing something. Saturday, yesterday morning, I was back there, right back there. I mean, the Lord just began to speak to my heart. and His glory just... just overshadowed me praise God and it just renewed the zeal glory to God renewed the zeal hallelujah amen for we got to we got to hang out with people who are zealous hang out with people who are zealous listen if you got somebody you've been hanging around that all they do is complain you need to find somebody else to hang around don't have anything to do with that. Pray for them. Correct them. Godly and correction. Now look, you know better than that. You know what the Word of God says. And leave that alone. Listen, I want to hang around somebody that's going to, amen, speak positive. Amen. I want to hang somebody, around somebody, amen, that, that loves God and, the, and just speaks the love of God and the blessings of God. Amen. I want, amen. You see, association will become a similarity. We know that. You hang around people who are excited about God and His church, and you'll become excited too. Amen. Or either that, or you'll begin to seek God more and more and more. Amen. We've got to once again seek the Lord and receive. Amen. If you want your zeal rekindled, get back in the fire. Get back in the fire. Well, I know that I knew the I use this illustration a lot, but Peter and John, they were zealous on the day of Pentecost. I mean, the power of God and the glory of God saturated them, and they were zealous, and they saw the 3,000 souls that were saved that day. And when they came back to prayer, amen, they, amen, went along, and, and that one that was sick, amen, in his body, he reached down and said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, glory to God. I've got the Lord on my side. I've got his word in my spirit. Now, let me just share something with you today brother and he reached down and he picked him up and said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus rise up and walk amen and he was healed and ultimately through all of that 5,000 more souls were saved hallelujah we need our zeal for God we need it we need it the pastor needs it amen the song director needs it Amen. The deacons need it. Church members, teachers need it. Listen, if you're not zealous for what you're doing for the Lord, you need to examine your heart and life and examine what you're doing. Amen. Become zealous wholeheartedly, doing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember when I first came to Malvern. I lived in that little house right across from First Assembly on Highland Street. I looked for something to do for God. I was so hungry to work for God and His kingdom. And I remember on Saturday mornings after the ball game was Friday night, and I knew we were going to have church over there. I'd get me a trash bag, and I'd go over there, and I'd pick up all of that paper, 
in that parking lot all around the church. And I'm telling you, Brother Sherman, amen, Brother Ray, when I was over there working and, amen, doing for the kingdom of God, amen, the spirit of God, the blessing of God, amen, the anointing of the Lord would just bless me from the top of my head to the tip of my toe. Zealous, wanting to do something for God. Amen. Then we get those buses out and and haul in those 75 and 100 kids, amen, and, and minister hungry to do something for God. Hallelujah. Do it wholeheartedly. Do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We need our zeal. We need our zeal. Would you stand with us? We need our zeal. Do it as unto the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord. I challenge you this morning. Examine your heart. Examine your life. I know I need help in this area. I know I do. As I begin to think about, am I as zealous as I once was? I know that I'm a little older than what I was. But I still want to be zealous. I still, amen, want to be eager. I want to live for God, amen, with excitement. I want to work for the kingdom of God, amen, with fervor, hallelujah. Because people are drawn to that. They're drawn to that. I wonder today, are we eager and excited to work for the Lord? Are we eager and excited to come to church? Are we eager and excited about prayer meeting? Are we eager and excited about worshiping the Lord? If there's no in any of that equation, we need the zeal of the Lord renewed in our lives today. We need the zeal of the Lord to be renewed in our lives today. Hallelujah. Brother Roger, would you sing some of that? In my life. Let's sing it, church. Lord, be glorified. Be glorified. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. He's in this place. He's in this place. He is the walking, personified Word of God. And He's here to, to save. He's here to deliver. He's here, amen, to provide and to bless what your need is today. Are you here? You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I want you to know He's here today and He will forgive you of your sins. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. He's in this place. Are you here? Maybe you're here this morning and you've examined your life and and maybe you feel like you're not as zealous as you once were. You're not as hungry, amen, for the presence of God as you once was. You're not, amen, as so eager, amen, to do the work and the will of the Lord as you once was. It can be rekindled, revived in this place. Are you here this morning? Are you here? I'm going to open this church, these altars. I'm going to ask you to come. Just come and examine your life and say, Lord, help me, Lord, to be zealous for your kingdom. Help me, O Lord, to wholeheartedly, O God, serve and to do, Lord, what you've called me to do. Hallelujah. Would you come?
Listen, every deacon ought to come. Every teacher ought to come. Amen. Every minister ought to come. Every choir member ought to come. Everyone that works in this church in any way ought to come and say, Lord, let me do it wholeheartedly.